Next, we have a special guest, Mr. Miyamoto. Hello, it's exciting to be here today. As you already know, we are currently partnered with Illumination Entertainment to bring you the Super Mario movie starring Chris Pratt coming to theaters this spring. As the kids say, get hype, it'll be a banger. However, what you may not already know is we at Nintendo have been so inspired by this project that we've purchased our own movie studio. Soon, Kirby, Samus, Link, and more will get their time on the big screen. And that time may come sooner than you think. I present to you a first look at the end see you. Hello Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that going forward will be voiced by Chris Pratt. Speaking of good old Star-Lord, if you want to know what his voice is gonna sound like in the upcoming Mario movie, check out the new episode of Film Cool, which just launched alongside this one. It's a Mario movie weekend here on the channels. I suppose you could call it a theory binge watch, if by binge watching you mean like two 15 minute episodes back to back. I'll admit, binge here is being used pretty loosely. Anyway, these are two related episodes that are better watched together, and I can't guarantee that you're going to be stunned by some of the things we sussed out about this Super Mario movie. Links are going to be in the corner, on screen, and assuming YouTube isn't stroking out this weekend, right alongside the recommended feed. But before you go and watch that one, stick around because the Mario movie isn't actually the biggest piece of Nintendo movie news that's come out in recent months. In an announcement that just kind of slipped under everyone's collective radar, Nintendo bought their own movie studio. You heard that right, Nintendo, the video game company, has decided to get into the movie business. And no, that's not a translation error, it's not some mis- understanding and it's not a hoax. It is legit. Here's the notice of acquisition filing, right here from the desk of Nintendo President Shantaro Furukawa himself. They went out and bought the Japanese studio Dynamo Pictures, with the intent to change its name to Nintendo Pictures. In their own words, Nintendo Pictures is going to be focused on, quote, development of visual content utilizing Nintendo IP. Ripping off that corporate speak, that's movies and TV shows based on Super Mario Brothers, Zelda, Metroid, Star Fox, a pantheon of characters each with their own stories, all culminating in a massive crossover movie. Super Smash Brothers. And then you're gonna get phase two, and that's gonna introduce Fire Emblem and Pokemon into the mix. And suddenly you're gonna have another big Avengers level crossover, Smash Brothers 2 Melee. Bayonetta is gonna show up in phase three, and then her short little fan with her powers is gonna show up in phase four. Then you're gonna get yourself a Pikmin series, which is gonna go straight to streaming, but will be required viewing to understand the whole overarching narrative of the thing. Now, admittedly, I might be jumping the gun with all of this, but also it's pretty obvious to see how they could easily head in that sort of a direction. But before we get into the what, of it all, I actually want to get into the why. Now, I gotta be honest, I did not see this one coming. Six months ago, I did a whole video about how video game studios kept buying each other, and in that episode, I took it to its logical conclusion. With so much acquisition of video game companies, who was gonna own who when the dust settled? In that episode, my predictions were all based on the idea that massive media companies with streaming quotas to fill, like Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Disney, and Comcast, would want to buy game developers in order to acquire their IP. If you look at purchases like Disney buying Marvel, Star Wars, and Fox, that methodology largely pans out. And when it comes to video game IP, the jewel in the crown is Nintendo. No publisher has such a deep and well-beloved cast of characters in its roster. And while I think any of these companies would eagerly sacrifice their firstborn for a chance at courting Nintendo, my conclusion was that Nintendo would be swiping left to any and all potential suitors. They're the girl that's too good for you. They're content to stay single while playing the field a little bit. You might be able to produce a movie in collaboration with them, but you're not gonna get her to marry ya. And now, six months later, here comes Nintendo pulling an Uno reverse card on me and buying their own studio. In some ways, the new announcement actually proved me right. They were too good for everyone else, so instead of trusting their IP to other people, they pull the most Nintendo move Nintendo could make, they decide to do it for themselves. So today, I want to talk about this decision, why it's the most unexpectedly expected move that you could have possibly gotten from the big end. Then, I want to dig a bit deeper into the acquisition itself. Who are Dynamo Pictures, and what could Nintendo have planned for them moving forward? Because let me tell you, I suspect that movies are the least ambitious project in their roster. Ready to begin, my friends? Let's -a go! To start off, why is it such a brilliant move for Nintendo to buy a movie studio? And if it is so brilliant, why isn't anyone else doing it? Let's tackle the second half of the question first. If you haven't noticed, video game movies don't have themselves the best reputation. They aren't faithful to the original source material, they cast big name actors rather than the people who are right for the role, and to top it all off, they're usually just awful movies. Doom, Assassin's Creed, Mortal Kombat, Resident Evil, you name it, tends to be pretty disappointing. At 
absolute best, you're dealing with something that's bland and unmemorable. Like last year's Uncharted movie. Wait, what? Really? It was this year? And right at the top of the dumpster fire mountain that is video game movies is, of course, the Super Mario Brothers movie from 1993. King Koopa here. Oh, yes, sir. I'd like the Koopa special. Pterodactyl tail on that. I know this is gonna sound a little strange, but I want you to meet... My father. Oh! Oh! Here's what the actor for Mario himself had to say about it. Quote, the worst thing I ever did, Super Mario Brothers. It was a wow. nightmare. The whole experience was a nightmare. It had a husband and wife team directing whose arrogance had been mistaken for talent. After so many weeks, their own agent told them to get off the set. Whoa. Nightmare. Idiots. As the story goes, he would get drunk before each day of filming and continue drinking between takes. This wasn't a Super Mario Brothers movie, but it also wasn't a sober Mario Brothers movie either. And while Nintendo never directly expressed their displeasure with the production, Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto said in an interview, quote, In the end, it was a very fun project that they put a lot of effort into. The one thing that I still have some regrets about is that the movie may have tried to get a little too close to what the Mario Brothers video games were. And in that sense, it became a movie that was about a video game rather than being an entertaining movie in and of itself. Too close to what the games were, huh? I too will never forget the first time that I heard Toad's guitar solo playing from a steamy back alley while getting ready to fight a guy with blonde cornrows named Bowser and his pair of shrunken-headed Goomba minions. All joking aside though, former Nintendo of America president Reggie fils -Aimé said in 2017 that the film, quote, left a really bad taste in the mouth of the developers and that horror stories about its production circulated throughout the company. Basically, that one experience scared them away from movies for decades. You know what? That's a shame, because only a few years prior they'd partnered with an animation studio to make a Mario anime that was... not terrible. <laughs> Luigi even gets to save the day. Fun fact, this movie also introduces us to Princess Peach's fiancé. This guy, Prince Haru, a blue worm that they refer to as a dog. Translations in the late 80s be weird. But companies are starting to realize that there's good money to be made from video game movies when they're done right. The first Sonic movie earned an incredible $320 million. The sequel did even better at 404, and it's currently the ninth highest grossing movie of this year. But Detective Pikachu topped them all, earning an incredible $400 33 million dollars worldwide, putting it squarely in the top 20 highest grossing movies of 2019. Which is saying a lot because that was a year stacked with power hitters like Endgame, Joker, and Frozen 2. Video game movies, a genre that was considered dead on arrival a decade ago, is suddenly a potential golden goose. The kids that grew up with these franchises now have disposable income to buy the tickets to make your movie a success. And so the gold rush is real. Mass Effect is getting a TV show coming to Amazon, Bioshock is coming to Netflix, Blumhouse Studios is doing something with the FNAF movie, maybe? The point is that Nintendo, like everyone else, should be packaging up their IP to license to other production companies. But nope, they had one bad experience, they got burned, and they're still nursing the scars. So in true type A control freak form, they buy a first party production company with the intent of building it themselves. In fact, as far back as 2017, Reggie fils -Aimé was already telling us that this was in the cards. Quote again from him, The Mario movie was a situation where, unfortunately, we did not have a hands-on role. We did not play a key brand champion in the making of that movie, which worked out so horribly. End quote. We didn't have control of it, therefore it failed. Mm, sounds like something I would say. Anyway, buying a production company like this is a move that honestly wouldn't have been that surprising 10 to 15 years ago. It's exactly what Marvel did with Marvel Studios before Disney snatched the whole thing up. And hey, a decades-old strategy? Yeah, it's kind of on brand with Nintendo. They're a company that's regularly called out for being stuck in the past. Last year, it was revealed that they were finally upgrading their multiplayer servers after 18 years. These things were so old, they were designed for Windows 98. I guess it's good that they skipped the whole Vista era. But the reason buying your own studio fell out of favor is because it's financially risky. If you're doing a movie for yourself, suddenly you've built out a whole other arm to your company. You have employees, you have overhead costs, you're funding the project yourself. Sure, if the movie performs well, you're gonna win big. You keep it all. But if it doesn't, well, that's a lot of money that you just flush down the big green pipe. And remember, you specialize in making video games, not making movies. So you're outside of your wheelhouse. Compare that to
back to licensing out your IP like they're currently doing with Illumination. Under that model, Illumination is likely paying for the rights to use your character. It's a payday for you. They're likely sharing any profits that they make with you. Another payday. And they're likely the ones that are footing most, if not all, of the bill. Sure, the upside isn't nearly as strong, but the risk is nearly non-existent. Nearly. You see, in Nintendo's mind, that sort of model doesn't take care of the biggest risk of all. Not the money, the control. There's always the possibility that this external production company can make you look dumb, just like the Mario movie did all those years ago. In fact, they are so scared of something like that happening again that in 2015, when Netflix leaked that they might be doing a Legend of Zelda show, Nintendo killed any and all projects with them instantly, including a Claymation Star Fox series. Here's the story from Adam Conover from Adam Ruins Everything. In like 2000... 14 or 15, there was all this news that Netflix was going to make a Legend of Zelda television show. At the same time, I worked at College Humor, and we had a secret project where we were going to make a claymation version of Star Fox with Nintendo. Suddenly, there were reports, Netflix isn't doing this Legend of Zelda anymore. And then I heard from my boss, we're not doing the Star Fox anymore. I was like, what happened? He said, oh, someone at Netflix leaked the Legend of Zelda thing. They weren't supposed to talk about it. Nintendo freaked out because they, they it was the first time they had done any IP in years and they pulled the plug on everything. They pulled the plug on the entire program to adapt these things. And it might ruin everything, but in this case, Netflix definitely ruined what sounds like a really cool Star Fox project. Just saying. So they want control, but then how does Nintendo lessen the risk? Remember, they make video games, not movies, and that's gonna be a big gamble for them. Well, I suspect that's where Illumination Entertainment comes in. Shigeru Miyamoto has been working heavily with Illumination to bring Mario to life, and he is famously an old school game designer who's all about technology, mechanics, and efficiency. So it's not hard to imagine that he and his team, having watched Illumination pictures work on the Mario movie got a feel for the entire process of managing an animated movie production versus managing a game production. And then they went back to Nintendo HQ in Japan and reported, yeah, so the movies? We can totally do the movies ourselves. And this is actually a lesson told in reverse from Nintendo's past. One of the most famous Nintendo stories comes from the 1990s when they partnered with Sony to create a CD-ROM upgrade for the Super Nintendo, a device that would allow the system to play disc-based games and work as like a DVD player. But at the last possible opportunity, Nintendo backed out of the deal, largely because they didn't trust Sony or CDs. They preferred cartridges, an older format that they just so happened to have full control and ownership over. Hmm, sensing a pattern much? Sony got burned, but in working with Nintendo, they started to learn the ins and outs of the video game business. They said, hey, we can do that for ourselves, and thus Nintendo gave rise to their greatest rival, the PlayStation. Just like Sony learned the video game business from Nintendo all those years ago, I suspect that now, Nintendo is now learning movies from Illumination. But the most interesting interesting part of this acquisition is the actual company that Nintendo bought, Dynamo Pictures. They're not a massive production company like Marvel Studios, they aren't even an anime studio as you might traditionally think of one. They specialize in 3D, CG, and motion capture work. They primarily handle contracts for commercial projects, live events, and theme park attractions with 3D animated elements. Basically, they're the team that you call when you need a 3D animator or a motion capture team to create a specific element of a larger project. So while the news reported Nintendo purchased a movie studio, what Nintendo actually purchased purchased was a building full of high-end animators and equipment. That doesn't necessarily mean they aren't making movies like every headline's been reporting, but the fact that these guys are versed in a multitude of animation formats, specifically in some of the strange non-traditional formats like live events, feels like it's a purposeful decision by Nintendo. They've always been focused on two major elements when it comes to video games, technology and gameplay. Their tech has always happened to be weird and experimental. Playing games by waggling a stick at the screen, a portable console with two detachable motion-based controls that docks into the TV, literal cardboard being sold for $80. I mean, a prime example is the Lego Mario set that was released back in 2020. For years, everyone knew that Mario and Lego would fit together like, well, there's nothing that fits together better than Lego, and fans would have been satisfied to get some Mushroom Kingdom-centric building sets and Mario minifigs, but that's not how Nintendo was gonna do it. They needed to Nintendo-fy Lego Mario, and they did it by including a gamified integration. It was actually really cool, by the way. If you haven't seen what this thing can do, here's a clip. Lego Mario!
Like, who does this? Nintendo. That's who. You don't see Minecraft sets doing that sort of stuff. Sometimes Nintendo's off-the-wall approach works. Sometimes it doesn't. But that drive towards doing things differently makes acquiring an experimental and varied production company feel like the perfect fit. It'll allow them to go for that weird, wonderful style that we've come to love from Nintendo. But now, they're just gonna be doing it in the medium of movies. And not just any movies, either. Because here's the twist, my friends. Nintendo's all about mixing things up, right? Well, I suspect that they're gonna want to do the same with this new acquisition. What if Nintendo Pictures wasn't just a brand label for movies featuring characters like Kirby and Samus, but instead are exclusive Nintendo experiences? I suspect that Nintendo is gonna be using them to create new video content streamed exclusively on the Switch, with interactive, gamified elements tied to everything from amiibos and QR codes to the motion controls and gyroscopic abilities of the system. Now, this isn't an entirely new idea. Companies like Netflix have already experimented with interactive choose-your-path storytelling to a huge amount of success in the streaming world, with projects like Bandersnatch and the interactive Kimmy Schmidt special. They've been looking for years for more of that sort of content, but the issue is that interactive game-movie hybrids are not what people think of when they think Netflix, or even movies. They think video games, and no company is as synonymous with video games as Nintendo. Nintendo Pictures being a brand name for streaming content and or a whole streaming platform immediately lets you know this isn't just a movie, it's a Nintendo movie. A movie that's also a game that you can play around with in some additional fun way. I'm not saying I know exactly how it's gonna go, but just like with every new Nintendo console release, I'm excited to see what weird and experimental ideas they're gonna be bringing to the table. But hey, while we're waiting on Nintendo to turn their franchises into movies, there are other gaming franchises that have been turned into movies and shows that aren't totally awful in the meantime. Personal highlight of mine, The Witcher over on Netflix. Not only are the games amazing narratively, but also the show over on Netflix, really solid, both seasons one and season two. And now, after a stint on Netflix, The Witcher is making a jump back into video game land thanks to today's sponsor, AFK Arena. You guys know, I have been very upfront on this channel that I love a good RPG. It's why I love The Witcher series in the first place, but there just aren't enough hours in the day to play through an entire RPG. Between meetings, writing scripts, being a parent, my schedule is packed. I just don't have the time to sit there and grind levels or farm items, which means I'm often stuck on one level for weeks and weeks, never making any progress, and then I pick up the controller and I'm like, wait, where was I again? How do I play this game? Where is the X button? But that is actually why AFK Arena's been perfect for me lately. If you couldn't guess from the title, AFK Arena allows you to be away from your keyboard, or I guess phone, technically, but it continues the RPG grind for you while you're off doing other things in your life. So whenever I do have a free moment, I can quickly hop in and find that, hey, while I was gone, my team got stronger, and I can finally be leveled up enough to go through the dungeon that I was waiting on, all without me having to do the tedious work of grinding myself. But obviously I started this whole section talking about The Witcher, so where's The Witcher, Matt? Why was that such a random thing for you to bring up? Well, don't worry, because AFK Arena wasn't satisfied with just scratching one RPG itch, now they're doing a crossover with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. You can now get two heroes from that franchise to join your AFK Arena squad, Geralt and Yennefer. Toss a coin to your Witcher, friends, except here, you don't have to. You don't have to spend any money on this, in fact. Not only is AFK Arena free, but these two characters from The Witcher 3 are also free for three days, and after that you'll be able to redeem them for free in other ways, which sounds like a pretty sweet deal to me. So if you want to get your hands on these heroes and start playing a really satisfying mobile RPG experience, you know the drill. Head on down to the description and click the link to start your AFK RPG journey today. Let them know that Game Theory sent you. But like, really, in the comments around this game, let them know. Game Theory Squad, y'all. Uh, basically what that does is it trolls them a little bit, which is just funny for me, and hopefully for you, but also it lets them know like, hey, I'm the one who sent you, which is cool, that's good for them, it's good for us because then they want to sponsor us more. In general, it's fun for everyone, you get yourself a new RPG to play that also plays itself while you're away and grinds, which is awesome, and you get to also experience Witcher 3. So it's this weird fusion of elements that are all generally good. Thanks, friends. And also, while you're doing all that other stuff, will you do me one last favor? Remember, it's all just a theory. A GAME THEORY! Thanks for watching.